Hey, what's up guys? I get the constant request, whether it's in comments or messages, to show my favorite EDC knife, or something very similar, what is the best EDC knife? Now obviously I have an array of different knives here, all different kinds, fixed blades, folding knives, locking, non-locking, you know, um, there is no perfect EDC knife. People are constantly on the hunt. One knife after another, yeah, this is great, no, I don't like this, let's search for the next one, let's get the next one, let's get the next one. Uh, I found that if you like knives, if you truly have a passion for knives, you will never ever find your perfect EDC knife because even when you find a knife that's really close to exactly what you want, you'll still want something else. <laughs> so it's a, it's a fake journey and it's not about the end result. It's not about finding that grail knife for you. Of course, we all have these grail knives. Usually they're knives that we can't afford. They're just out of our, our price range or maybe something extreme and extravagant. We figure I will never spend a thousand dollars on a knife. You know, I'd love that knife. That'd be my dream knife, but I'll never have a thousand dollars to spend on it. I mentioned this before. It doesn't matter what your, your financial situation is. If you want a thousand dollar knife, you can get one. It may take you five years to save. It may take you 15 years to save. It may take you a week. It really depends on what your background is, what you do, how much money you make, you know, what you're, what's accessible to you. Uh, I can tell you that the Chris Reeves Sedenza took me 10 years to buy. 10 years. Most people get on YouTube, they start getting to knives, they'll get one within maybe two or three months. You know, if they're like an adult and they have money to have a job, they just, they hear about them, they think they're awesome, they have to get one. Um, you know, I spent 400 bucks on this knife, in and around, I got it from Knife Art uh, a few years ago. I love this knife, I've carried it, I've used it. At first, when I first got it, it was such a, a dream knife for me, I babied it, I didn't use it, it was a safe queen for a while. But it literally took me, I knew about this knife for 10 years before I pulled the trigger on it. Never thought I'd ever spend that much money on it. And I think I told the story before, my grandfather, my father's father, he, when he passed away, it was such a big blow to me and it was such a big personal, um, you know, obviously a sad time, a lot of sorrow and stuff like that. I wanted to treat myself to something that would kind of take my mind off it a little bit. And that's when I, I splurged on this and I, I had a paycheck at the time and it was most of my paycheck. I think I got paid like $485 or something for the week, um, or not the week, for the, um, uh, for the month. At my current job, I was working part-time uh, at Rite Aid Pharmacy. And um, yeah, I just blew the money. I knew there's other things I wanted to spend on, but I said, you know what, I just I always wanted that knife. I'm just gonna go out and buy one. Is this the perfect EDC? Uh, no. I think it's, a, it's one of my favorite knives to date. I've handled thousands of them. You guys know I, I always tout the, most of the uh, Chris Reeves knives. Um, I don't particularly like their fixed blades. I've handled them before, never owned one. But I think their folders really are all they're souped up to be. You know, everything that they're claimed to be this perfect. No, they're not magical. Yes, they're just knives. But there's plenty of other knives that are just as good. You know, um, there's, there's fans here and there. Some people are Strider people. Some people are Chris Reeves people. Some people are... You know, Reese Weiland custom people, some people specifically only want RJ Martin stuff. It really doesn't make a difference. It's whatever your thing is. But I happen to like these knives a lot. I really like them. But again, it took me 10 years to get this thing. Once I got this thing, I thought that'd be it. I could sell all my other knives. I'll always love this. No, are you kidding me? The happiness, even though I was extremely joyful when I got this, the very next day I was looking for my next knife. Searching online, reading the forums. What's next? Now I got this thing. It's amazing. I want something else. You know, it just doesn't end. You have to realize that. You have to come to the personal realization that if you are passionate about knives, it will never end. And it's not about finding your perfect knife. It's about the journey. It's about all the knives you try from your first one, you know, to the last one. And it really is never the last one. It's the last purchase before you happen to die, I guess. But us knife guys and gals out there who really have the passion for it, it doesn't end. And of course, there are certain things we are looking for, certain uh, specifications and preferences we have. But that's the whole point of this, is that I can't make a video on the perfect EDC because this knife right here, this little Kiridashi, which I still have, I did a review on this a long time ago, never used it, I'm going to start carrying again. Um, I love it. It's awesome. It's got its own little teeth. And I did do a full review on this, but it's really funky, really cool. And, you know, only one like it in the world. Custom made. Um, I like this knife. This knife is perfect for one person, whereas this uh, Victorinox Fisherman is perfect for a different person. It all depends on what you're doing with your knife. There's so many different factors to what makes a knife good or bad. Now, of course, there are some definitive characteristics of a knife that may make it uh, a, what's considered quality or perhaps um, lacking quality. Good knives, bad knives. There's a real gray area in there. 
A lot of people would think that this Bug Vantage is a bad knife, okay? There's a lot of other people who would think that this Chris Reeves Savenza is a bad knife. It's all preference. This is a quality knife. There's a lot of people that would argue that this is still a very good quality knife for the money. All right, it's better tenacious. You hear a lot about them. Not so much anymore. It's kind of like, I don't want to say it's a fad, but there was definitely a time period on YouTube where everyone was talking about the Tenacious. Everyone had a review on it. And now it's just moved on to another thing, like the, the Bug Vantage. There was a little, it's like pop culture in the knife community where, okay, this month where everyone's gonna talk about the Bug Vantage. But you know what happens is that a couple popular people who have a lot of subscribers do a video on it. And then all of a sudden it's exposed to all these people. So what happens? Everyone goes out and gets one and they want to do their own video. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's actually really cool. It gets the word out on great products. But there's other knives that people don't talk about on YouTube and you'll never see. You know, it's just something that, it just, it's how it works. But there truly is no perfect EDC. Uh, blade shape, blade size, blade steel, handle material, handle size, locking mechanism, um, origin of where the manufacturer is. You know, these are all different details that will change from person to person as to what the preference is. Some people like rubber. Some people like metal. Some people like Micara. Some people like G10. You know, there is no perfect knife. It's whatever's gonna work for you. The other thing I wanna mention is that every single one of these knives will open a package. Everyone will open a box. Everyone will open your mail. Every single knife on this table right now will cut rope. As long as you sharpen them up, they'll cut rope just fine. They'll cut through denim. You know, they'll cut through zip ties. Some will be better than others. Some will hold their edge longer. Some will perform better. Some won't perform as good. But they're all knives, they're all sharp. At the end of the day, they'll all do EDC tasks. It's just a matter of what you're using your knife for. You have to figure out exactly what you're using your knives for. If you have to take a paper and pen or use your, you know, some kind of notepad app on your cell phone or something, every single time you use your knife, write down what it is. Write down exactly what you're using your knives for. And then look at that and see what kind of knife you need that would better suit your personal needs for a knife. If you're constantly cutting fibrous things, perhaps in a workplace, a lot of times people, they get certain knives because they're using them at work. In my case, I'm going to review in the future a, uh, a cutter that I use at work. Now, it's something that's given to us as you know, male employees to, uh, to cut straps off of like bundle newspapers and flats. Well, well all magazines and, and uh, catalogs and stuff, they're considered flats as far as postal people are concerned. And what happens is they come with uh, plastic straps on them in, a, in like a cross. So let's say the sheath is a package of uh, flats. What happens is it goes to your post office and there's a bundle. Let's say these are JC Penny catalogs. There might be like 50 in a bundle and then there'll be a plastic strap this way and then a plastic strap this way to make a T so it doesn't shift, they're all together. And then the whole thing is completely covered in, uh, in plastic, like shrink wrap. So what I have to do in the morning when I'm sorting flats is I have to take each one of these bundles and there's hundreds of them, thousands and thousands of catalogs and magazines every day. And uh, what I'll do is I'll take whatever EDC I have at the time. And the first thing I do is I, I put my blade upside down like this, okay? And I'll cut through the plastic just to get it started. I'll zip across and then knock both those straps. Now I don't need to use a pocket knife. I choose to use a pocket knife because I enjoy it. It's a hobby. I have a specific hooked cutter that's actually more efficient in doing the work than any of these knives but I just prefer to use these because it's more fun. It's a preference. Um, I will review that tool in the future because it's actually really cool. And a lot of them are sold not specifically just for, for male handling, but uh, also for hunters because it's a, it's a fantastic knife to, uh, to actually you know, cut through a rib cage and stuff like that. It's basically just double razor blade and it's a hook. It's kind of a rescue knife type design, very similar to what Benjamin puts out and a couple other companies. But um, I'll show that in the future. I'll try to review that for you guys because if you have something that's task specific at work like that, like cutting straps, um, it's fantastic for that. But I just choose to use these because it's so much cooler. It's so much more fun. It's my hobby. It's my passion. But, um, yeah, I mean, different strokes for different folks. That's just how it rolls, you know? Someone out there is going to think the Tenacious is really ugly. It's stupid looking. A lot of people don't like Spydercos for a lot of different reasons. I think a lot of people out there who don't like them, particularly if you've never tried them, it's just because a lot of people talk about them. It's like if everyone's talking about, I don't know, the Yankees, you know, and everyone, you, you go to work and everyone's like, oh, the Yankees are awesome. And like you're walking down the street, going to the pharmacy or something, and you hear someone outside, oh, the Yankees are awesome. Eventually you go, you know what? I hate the Yankees. <laughs> it's not because of how they perform or, or how they are as a baseball team. It's because everyone likes them. So you, you try to get away from this like group um, favoritism and you want to be a rebel. You don't want to be the, just another person like Spider Coast. I'm using them as specifically as an example because they are the most predominant company talked about on YouTube. It just so happens that a lot of people like Spyderco knives. 
and people who don't like them really don't like them. Um, they're fantastic performing knives, but I like all different companies. I think every company has something great to offer out there. You know, and then of course some of them shine in certain areas and others. Maybe price, maybe innovation, maybe uh, you know durability, whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, there's no reason to not like a company. Like I said, I mean, this is off the topic of EDC knives, but I mean, specifically Spyderco gets a lot of flack for that because I, I think it's really just so many people like them. Someone out there is just like, you know what, screw them. I don't like them. And, they, and a lot of times they never even tried them before. Uh, but that goes with a lot of companies too. Benchmade gets a lot of hate. Uh, Benchmade gets a lot of uh, hatred from people because some people say they rip off designs. Other people, what you guys don't realize, a lot of you, is um, the politics of knife stuff. And honestly, I don't like getting into it. I happen to know some of it just by reference. People are constantly telling me things. I've always been, when I was a forum guy, I was very much in the, the inside. <laughs> and doing what I do now, reviewing and stuff like that, I do deal with a lot of companies out there. I call to ask questions all the time. I'm trying to get information. I've talked to representation, uh, you know, representatives from Benchmade. I've talked to people from Spyderco. I've talked to people from Columbia River Knife and Tool. I've talked to people from Buck. I've talked to people from Victorinox. Uh, every company you could think of, SOG, I mean, I talk to all these people on a regular basis, as do a lot of other people on YouTube. And believe me, the one big thing I want to get out there, too, is they are watching your videos. They watch all the videos online. If I'm a guy working for Benchmade and I'm in the marketing department or public relations, it's my job to know what people are talking about. It's my job, first of all, to market my stuff. You know, what, what people, what dealers am I going to send them to? Where am I going to put advertisements on the Internet, you know? All these knife companies are, are fully aware of the, the knife community. I don't know what the double quote was. <laughs> knife community on YouTube, and they watch all of our videos. It doesn't matter if you have a million subscribers or two. All right? If you're a guy from Benchmade, you're typing in Benchmade Knives, you know, as a regular YouTube uh, search. And, and, like, weekly, if not more, you're looking at brand-new videos put out of your product. You want to see what people think. If they put out a knife, let's say the Benchmade Vex or something, the old red line, you know, Vex, which is pretty cool. A lot of controversy because use a spider coat hole opening, blah, blah, blah. A lot of you guys know that. A lot of you guys don't. But it's nor here or there. Let's say uh, I'm Benchmade guy, right? We put out the Vex. I'm going to search Benchmade Vex, and I want to see what people think. If everyone doing a video review on them is saying they're horrible because they have no grip, guess what they're going to do? They're going to make a Vex 2, and it's going to have a heck of a lot of grip on it. We do control. Not just, When I say we, I mean the knife community. People who go to you know trade shows. People who go to um, different knife events. People who talk on the Internet. We're being watched constantly in a very good way. They want to make us happy. So um, as far as a perfect EDC, there is no such thing. There's not the perfect company. There's not the perfect brand. There's not the perfect size. Everyone's different. Everyone's going to like something different. And I'm, as I mentioned in my last uh, video, I think I talked about it in the review um, of the knockout, the Kershaw knockout, is that um, a lot of the different things that they're doing, you know, they're, they're changing designs, they're, they're altering things. It's because we want them to alter. It's they're, they're going on our feedback. They're trying to make us happy, like any good company would. They're following what their customers like and getting right in there and making the changes that we, we demand, you know, as a whole. Um, but, yeah, as far as EDC knives go, everyone's different. Everyone has different, uh, you know, different likes, different wants. As I mentioned in that review as well, we all have different likes as far as what's cool. You may think this uh, CRKT SPEW is a cool-looking knife. If you think it's cool looking, then you want more information to see if you want to buy one. If you don't think it's cool looking, and right away I go to show it, you start a video and like, okay, here's the blah, 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 and you go, wait, wow, that's ugly. Guess what? You totally lost interest. You no longer care what steel it. You don't care because you're not going to buy it because it's ugly. There's nothing wrong with that. We do buy things with our eyes first. You know, it's just like food. Um, you can look at a piece of pizza and it can look like crap. It could be like, you know, half the cheese is falling off and it's just burnt on the crust and you look at it, it may be the best tasting pizza pizza ever, but if that's sitting in the glass case of your pizzeria, guess what? You're not buying that slice, so you're going to miss out. You don't know what that's going to taste like. Whereas this beautiful looking piece may taste like rubber, but you don't know. It's a crapshoot. We do the same things with every product that we purchase. Everything. You know, the big screen TV. Maybe you get it because it's big, but maybe the quality is not as good as a smaller one. We, we buy things with our eyes first, and then we get facts later. But uh, as far as all these knives, you may say, like, oh, this is the best EDC option out here. Of all these knives, this is the one I would pick. Guess what? Are you in the UK? Because if you're in the UK, you might grab this. Okay? Friction folder. Why? Because you can legally have it. And you really don't want to take a chance of getting in trouble of having a locking knife. So, different strokes for different folks for different reasons. But that's it. There is no perfect EDC. I will continue to try to review every knife on the planet. <laughs> Just because I want to and because you want to see it. And uh, 
as the review after review goes by, pick some ones you like, try them out, but the journey never really ends. Enjoy the journey, because when you get to the finish line, the game's over, and we don't want it to end. We want it to go on forever. So, that's all. No perfect EDC. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.